I'm Hanson Hector and Superstar, Brad Pitt. And I've done a lot of commercial in my lifetime. I mean, I've been accused of a lot of things like eating, you know, snacking and, and, and between takes or snacking during making them by films. I know you hear from them in the background, it's still worth up that time now. But today, we're here to celebrate George Washington. George, um, don't know what his middle name is, Washington, first president of the United States of America. Hmm. It was good salami, by the way. And, um, he was a general in the war. I know. Um, he kicked ass. Because, yeah, and chopped down a cherry tree, going on, ran and turned to his father and said, I cannot lie. I chopped down this cherry tree. What you gonna do about it, bitch? Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, dumb. George Washington was a badass. Also, if you chopped down a cherry tree back then, those days, no, cherry trees were not uh, for they are now. So, I guarantee you, his father probably whooped his ass from here to, well, a lot of people say ten buck too, but I don't really know where that is. So, um, from here to Lake Michigan. So, for an example, for example, I know they 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 were in England, so that doesn't make sense. But just hear me out. I'm just talking about distance. When I'm in California, for example, I'm Hollywood. Um, if I was to kick your ass from here to Lake Michigan, that'd be a hell of an ass kick to kick him. Ass kicking. And also, another reason why George Washington was a badass is because he threw a silver dollar all the way across the Delaware. Now, it was probably a very shallow end of the Delaware, and he probably tossed it to one of his buddies on the other side of the boat, like, um, oh, what's his name? Did with the, the Heisman Trophy after he won the Super Bowl. You guys remember that? Tom Brady. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. Tom Brady. Not the Heisman Trophy. It's called the Lombardi Trophy. The hills of there with me. Well, I tell you what, I must be just tired, that's all. But George Washington not only was a badass, but he wore a powdered wig throughout his lifetime. Uh, he owned a few slaves, I do believe, but he treated them very well. Not that that makes it any better, but I'm just saying, like, all your rich folk owned slaves back then. It was pretty normal. <laughs> pretty rare if you treated them very nicely. Um, he had one wife. A lot of people say he had many affairs. Her, her, and even Martha, and Martha, well-known accomplishments include sewing together the American flag. It's true. But it wasn't her that uh, made the American flag. It was Betty Ross. So, there you go. Now you guys know, and if they say, journalism, no one's half the battle, good boys. All right. Um, it was pretty much all I know about George Washington, but so do I. Happy birthday to him. And this has been Brad Pitt. Remember, Pringles, what you pop, you can't stop. Uh. Hey there, Brad. This is Bob Ross. And today, instead of painting happy little trees, we're going to paint Brad Pitt's head on a pike. I don't usually paint people, but I'll make an exception in this case. Because if Brad doesn't tell another fucking story
then his contract will become a piece of shit because the video's too goddamn short. So, Brad, if I were you, I would tell at least one more story. Hmm? Oh. We're going to play those games, are we? Well, I'm going to tell you this much. If it turns out that I don't get A for the, uh, what was it? Five minutes or something that I've already done. And then old Bran, are you going to soon? Who the hell's in charge of all these videos? What's his name? Hebrews 77. Huh? Hebrews AI voice parodies him. You know I get paid like one point two million dollars for each recording, right? And it's like I don't know, one point zero million per voice recording. Okay, like we're not even talking minutes here. What do you suggest I do, Bob Ross, by the way? Since you're so interested in this deal. He bro said he wants you to get up and do the story of the three bears. I, but now here's the, uh, the trick. You got to put George Washington in there somewhere. Since the name of this video is Brad Pitt Talks About George Washington. Okay, bye. This is completely absurd. All right. If I'm getting paid for it, I guess I might as well do it, huh? Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there was these three bears. There was a papa bear, a mama bear, and a weed weedle baby bear. And the real baby bear was a fussy little cuss, and uh, he liked getting in people's refrigerators and uh, farting inside of them. And this made the food taste something horrible. Now, now, we're not going to do that. We're going to tell the story exactly as it is. We're not going to throw any disgusting details in there. We're not going to get nasty with it. We're not going to get sexual with it. You're going to tell the straight up story of the three bears. And that's it. You capiche? Now you looky here, Robert. Or as they call you in Italian, Roberto. Well, I may tell you this right now. It states in my contract that Brad Pitt has complete creative control over what he wants to do or say with the three bears. So, you shut the fuck up. You sit there, paint yourself some happy little trees. And, uh, let old Brad tell the story how old Brad wants to tell the story. Got it? Uh, now, come on. Let's be fair. <laughs> we gotta do our part, as it were. And uh, next time you tell me to shut the fuck up and paint some happy little trees, just remember, I'm a green beret. And I can snap your neck with two fingers. Okay, well, normally I would have regarded that as a threat and I would have had my lawyer on the phone to sue your ass. But, seeing how you've been dead for several years now, even decades as it were, I can't exactly do that, now can I? How do you sue a ghost? You know, I've seen a Ghostbusters and they need ghost warriors. We need lawyers that can sue ghosts. The ghosts need to be held accountable for your actions. <laughs> well, anyway. So, you want to hear the story of the three bears? 
All right, here it goes. Once upon a time, there was three bears. There was a mama bear, a daddy bear, and a wee and a wee little baby bear. And the mama bear was cooking their dinner. I don't know exactly what it was. Maybe, maybe it was um, roast beef. Who the hell cares? Anyway, she was cooking in dinner, roast beef, mashed potatoes, green beans, the whole, the whole works. And uh, they all sat down to eat, and Baby Bear screamed and he cried. He's like, Mama, this food is too dang hot. And Papa Bear agreed with him, goes, Mama, listen, food is too dang hot. You know we can't make puckered lips and, and blow on stuff. So Mama Bear was off hush range. She was like, dang, what do you guys expect it to be ice cold or something? I just pulled it up the stove. Man, you guys, I make you a, a straight up nice, wonderful meal. And you guys complain because it's too hot. You look to you guys thing to eat at all. You realize we're bears and we're living in the forest. Do you realize like how hard it is to grocery shop out here without people staring at you or going, oh my God, there's a bear in the grocery store. I mean, that's hard enough. Well, let's face it. We're bears. We don't have posable thumbs. What I did for you guys here tonight is all but impossible. So you should at least be appreciative of that. But I'll tell you what, I'm no compromise. I'm willing, you know, why don't we go for a walk while this stuff cools off? It can't get too long to walk though, because it will get cold. We don't have microwaves, we bears. I'm trying to wonder if the what we could do, have toilet paper and eat porridge. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes show up in three stooges shorts. So anyway, um, they all went for a walk and here come little Red Riding into that. Just coming in. She knocked on the door first. No answer. Uh, what the hell are you talking about? Say it like you gonna say if you free of the lie popping gagging guy dude man. Uh it's not Red Riding Hood. But it's Goldilocks. The name of the story is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Switch. Holy shit. Get off of my video and quit uh, hiding the spotlight. This is my video, okay? Doesn't see Donald Trump anywhere in the title. So anyway, uh, they went for a walk. And in come Goldilocks. Excuse me. So she comes walking in there and uh, she was all exhausted from running down to Big Bad Wolf and all that crap. Cause there's Big Bad Wolves and almost every single one of these stories, so don't give me crap. Uh, so she, she sits down and uh, starts eating one of the, the foods, the plates, and uh, I think it was the Papa Bear's dinner. She goes, who we? This year, uh, what did I say it was? Oh yeah, roast beef is too hot. And then she tries the mom beer's plate, says this roast beef is too cold. Which I don't know physically, why wouldn't all of them be the same temperature? I don't know, maybe they were sitting on cooler ends of the room. But then she tried the baby beer's Roast beef is a, mm, mm, boy, this roast beef is just right. And it is scrumptious as hell. So she ate all the roast beef. And then what you guys looking at? Hey, I'm trying to tell a story over here. Do you mind? I'm trying to tell a story here. And I got these two guys ogling me like those two old guys from the Muppets that make fun of everybody. Anyway, so she said, oh man, I am so full because of this here roast beef. I am going to go sit a spell. So let this food digest. So she gets up and goes to the living room. 
finds out that entertainment centers really don't exist in the Bears world, says, God, thank God I brought my tablet with me. So she pulls out her tablet, sits there on the first chair, and he goes, God, this hurt to my bum. Turns out that chair was too hard, so she goes on the next one. I guess the uh, Obama Bears chair, and it says, this chair, which I don't understand this at all, how could it be too soft, so stupid? It's a wooden chair. You know what? I'm going to make up something else. She goes, uh, this chair's too wobbly. And as she sits in the baby bear's chair and goes, uh-oh, and then crash, smashes it to Billy Beesmith. How couldn't the baby bear's chair wasn't just right? It makes no sense. Anyway. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Franks. I just wanted to say the Brad Pitt, you are doing a good job. I love the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. The story itself is beyond belief. Of course, well, of course, it's beyond belief. It's totally made up. So anyway, um, she gets really sleepy and I mean, really sleepy. She has to go upstairs and she's like, Ooh, boy, I don't know, lay down now and go to bed. I guess the food, the roast beef must have a lot of MSG in it or something. I don't know. Some shit like that. Um, but anyway, she goes and maze on the first bed and goes, man, this bed is too firm. And then she lays in Mondo Bear's bed and she goes, woo wee. This bed is way too soft. I mean, you should see sunk right into it like just poof. Anyway, so then she lays on baby bear's bed and goes, this bed is just right. And she was out cold, didn't even have to have the fan on or nothing. Now that's beyond belief, Jonathan Franks. Anyway, so then after that, it was several hours later, because boy, this chick really, really had to take a long nap. They all came back. Why were they going several hours, by the way? Wouldn't the porridge, I mean, the food be uh, nice and cool within like five minutes or so, 10 minutes at most? So anyway, the three beers realizing that they're carn carnivores, um, decided to eat Goldilocks. So they took their claws and they shredded her in many pieces. And while they were doing that, the mom the bear prepared the stove. You know what kind of think of it? That's probably what the roast beef was in the first place. Maybe it was human flesh. Maybe like, you know, somebody before Goldilocks had broke it in. And they're like, oh, God, hell no. We're, we're going to eat this some bitch. So, um. Yeah, since Goldilocks had wronged them of their their food, well, first of all, she broke in the tree. She uh, robbed them of their food. And then she violated the place by sleeping in all their beds. So, in my opinion, yeah, she deserved to get eaten. Anyway, they uh, cooked her up a nice, great big, juicy stew, along with carrots, potatoes, and celery. And, uh, the end. <laughs> All right, give him my paycheck, bitches. Brad, that, <laughs> Brad, my guy, that was quite gruesome. Um, thank God this, this channel is smart for not children. You know what I mean? Besides, that's not how it goes at all. Like, three beers caught no locks sleeping in the bed. Uh, and um, Papa Bear pulled out his shotgun and blasted her in the face and they hung her head up on the wall much like a hunter you know a human hunter would hang a, a, a deer hen up on the wall and her stuff and hung on the wall the end there you go now can I have a paycheck? George my dude uh, uh, 
Been a while, bro. Been a while. You know, you are so charming. You are a charming motherfucker. I'm going to give you half of my paycheck just because. God, how do you do that shit, man? All you got to do is throw a smile or that smile wink thing that you do. Wink, you know, and just say a few words and poof, Christo change you. Things just fall in your hands. Oh, I'm a mailman. But that's my version of the story. You got your version of the story. I say between the two of us, we got this, dude. What do you say we all go to the Red Lobster and uh, have some more you can eat shrimp on the old plants, too? Sounds good to me. You think I could bring my Batman to the long dome in case there are some kids dying? But would like to have, you know, Batman cheer them up. Hey, wait a minute now. Y'all can't just... First of all, that's a gruesome freaking ending. And y'all can't just leave it like that. Get back here and you tell the story three bears correctly. You gotta end it correctly. Do you hear me? Hey. Where you going? Come back. The story's not over with yet. Well, uh... Or I'm going to stop to your paycheck. Okay, well, I'm not interested in your opinion, Dr. Phil. I get paid for this gig no matter what, so... Me and the clown are going to go down to Red Lobster and gobble down some shrimp. Aye, now you're more lucky to come with us if you want, but you got to promise to be good. And, uh, yeah. Let's go, guys. Come on. Yeah, let's go pound down some shrimp, boys. Sounds good to me. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Dr. Phil, could you please uh, sit in the back seat? I, I just cleaned this Batman suit, and I really don't want to, you know, get it wrinkled. Oh, well, I guess if he can't beat him, join them. Do, 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 do. Hey, I hope I said that right. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Franks. Or is it Franks? I always get that mixed up. Anyway, this was truly a great video. And Jim and the holograms were truly outrageous, truly, truly, truly outrageous. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Speaking of track, don't forget to watch Star Trek. The next generation, not the old show that one blows. Anyway, if you like this video and want to see more like it, please remember to subscribe to the Hebrew I Voice parody channel for more videos that are truly beyond belief. That's all, folks. Star Trek.